Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, it is going to be another art inspired cake. Now this is called an alcohol ink painting. This cake is 100% edible. There is no ink involved, it is all food coloring. And I will show you exactly how this is done. Now I'm also going to add a disclaimer that the part where I am blowing the ink, I am actually using my mouth, which you would do on a canvas. But for cake, do not do that. This is just for demonstration purposes. And I did not have the tool that I needed to show you how it's actually done. But what I would use would be an airbrush with no ink in it whatsoever. And I will explain that when we get to it. And I'm also going to show you how to make a color coordinating rice paper sale. So if this sounds interesting, stick around. But first things first, we need to make our rice paper sales for the decoration since these need time to dry. I did make these over the night before or the day before and let them dry overnight. You can do them in your oven. You just set your oven on the lowest setting and set them in your oven for approximately 10 minutes and check on them periodically throughout that. And once they have dried, just crack your oven door open with a wooden spoon and let them cool down gradually. But I had time to do it overnight, so I did. So what I did is I just used my, my rice paper and I put it on my silicone mat and I am just using food coloring and water. This is really thin down food coloring so that you're getting more of a watercolor effect. And then once you brush, I got it on both sides and you just, you wanna get it wet enough so that it becomes malleable. And then we're gonna go ahead and just fold your silicone the way you want and then clip it with your clips. Um, since I am doing this just in the air overnight, I found that the wood um, clothespins work just fine. But if you're doing this in your oven, you're gonna need to use something that's, you know, more, you know, fireproof. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna just go ahead and do some smaller pieces also. And I did a lot more than I'm showing here because you get the idea. And the colors I used, one was a, this one here, this is actually an airbrush color. It was a blue with some pearlescence to it. And then I did a sky blue and a purple. No, I'm sorry, it was a turquoise and a purple. One of them, the turquoise is actually gel food coloring just mixed with some Everclear. That's Everclear there. And then um, I added some Everclear to all of them because you basically want to get this to be a watercolor consistency. You don't want it to be too concentrated of a color. And what I like about these is that these paintings is that it has kind of like a rim to the edge of the color and then it fades out. And I just find that to be a really appealing look. So I'm just going ahead and I'm putting the color on and then I'm using a brush dipped in just plain Everclear to thin out the um, concentration in certain areas. Now you're just gonna pick whatever colors you want and um, just arrange them however you want. I was kind of going kind of at a diagonal because I tend to like that look, but you can do it however you want. You can even do the entire piece of fondant. Now this is just a regular piece of fondant that I had rolled out to about an eighth of an inch thickness. And just kind of let it sit out for a little while so that it um, firmed up just a little bit, dried out just a little bit before I did the painting on it. I did find that the fluffy brushes worked the best for this, but I did not have three fluffy brushes, so that's why you're not seeing me use it on all of them. Now I'm just kind of trying to move the color around a little bit, seeing if that'll work. Because honestly, this was an experiment. I had never done this before, so this is new to me, so I'm figuring it out as I go. And right there you saw me blowing on it, and I'm using a straw to help blow, um, get more uh, control over the direction that the color is being blown. I wanted to move the concentration of the color towards the outside edge of each little section of color. And I wanted to have a deeper color in the middle, so I tried to concentrate the uh, purple in the middle, just to kind of emphasize the flow of that line. 
And if you want, you can add layers of this. If you want to have more um, detail, go ahead and add as many layers as you want. Or you can make it more kind of pastel and lighter if you want, like I did at the beginning. Just kind of leave it that way. You don't have to add this much depth to it if you want to. But where I was blowing on the, we'll call it the watercolor, um, and I'm doing it right there, that would be where I would use an airbrush with no color in it. Just turn it on and let the air do that for you. Do not blow on cakes that you're selling. These are not for sale. This is just for demonstration. Please do not come for me at me for that because I am, I am well aware that this is not what you would do if you were making these cakes for sale. That's why I'm telling you, use your airbrush. And this is just some bright copper metallic luster dust that I added with some Everclear too also. And I just wanted to add a little bit of that. Um, in hindsight, I kind of think I might have actually liked it better without the copper in it, without the metallic. I think that that was pretty, but I just thought it would make it pop a little bit more. So here we have my already crumb coated six inch four layer vanilla cake and it had been sitting in the refrigerator for about oh about 30 minutes to an hour I'm not sure I can't remember exactly how long but you want to leave it in your refrigerator for a little bit longer especially if you know you're going to be turning it upside down like that and I just put a pre-cut disc of fondant on the top put that plastic board on the top and that's just a just a corrugated white plastic cake board and then flip it over and then I find that you get a sharper, crisper edge on your fondant when you're paneling it like this on that top piece when you do it that way. Now here I'm just redoing the size of this. It was a little bit taller than I needed. And it was a half an inch, I believe half an inch to an inch. Maybe it was an inch too tall. So I did a half an inch off of the bottom and the top. And then I did double check to make sure that it was seven inches all the way across before I attached it to the cake. You don't want to have a surprise. You know, the whole carpenter thing was it measure twice, cut once. Same thing applies when you're dealing, dealing this type of a technique. And that is actually a quilting ruler that I like to use because you can see through it. You can see what you're cutting. And you don't want to put your ruler on top of your painting. Put it on the part that you are cutting off. A little helpful hint there. You don't want to ruin what you took all that time and work to make. And then I took the cake out of the refrigerator. It had been in there for another about 20 minutes. And I just sprayed it with water. Water is all I'm using to attach this piece of fondant to the cake. And since it's been sitting there, firming up or, you know, settling, firming up, not settling. That's not the word I want to use. But the fondant had been sitting out while I was working with it. It was more rigid and much easier to just pick it up and put it on the cake. And I also did not want to put the, um, what you call it, the acetate sheet on the painted side on this because I didn't want to ruin that. So leave it sitting out so that it firms up. And then I'm just using my ruler to cut the pieces where they meet together. This will be your back, obviously, because they don't match up, and that's okay. Every cake has a back. And, um, yeah, just make sure that you're cutting through both layers. Lay them on top of each other and then cut through both of them and remove the pieces, the extra pieces from both the piece on the top and the piece on the bottom and then just butt them up together. That's how you get a nice smooth join there. And it works really well when the pattern actually matches up. That's a little disappointing, but I knew that was going to happen since I was doing Caddy Corner. And then my little trick of using your confectioner's glaze to add a sheen to this cake. Now, something else to note. Just like as when you are doing um, acrylic paintings on a canvas, when you use your top coat, if it is not clear and marked the non-yellowing, it's going to make your white a little yellow. The same thing happens with this confectioner's glaze. So I wanted that cake to have a really glossy, glossy finish on it but I didn't want it to be yellow. So for this one, we're having to deal with more of a satin look and that's okay. I just think the colors would have popped a little bit more if there was a gloss sheen to it, but the, or shine to it, but that's okay. And then I just sprayed the um, flags with that as well. I, somewhere in my footage for where I removed the flags or the sails from 
the um, silicone and the wax paper ended up missing. I don't know where it's at, but you just pull those off gently once they have completely dried. And I scored a little mark on the top where I was gonna put the sail and put a little buttercream behind it to hold it up. And then use your extra pieces to kind of anchor them all together. Now, when you use your confectioner's glaze on your sails, again, don't put too much on them because when it dries, it con um, contracts. And I heard a little cracking and popping here and there. So I didn't do a second layer on them. But I think it did add a little shine to those also. And I like the transparency of the rice paper with this ink technique. Because both of them are kind of more of a transparent, you see through them a little bit type of design. And I think they all work together really well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and give it a try. And if you did enjoy it, please take a minute to go ahead and like, subscribe, share, comment, do all the things. Help me get these videos out there, guys. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticate Spy Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.